Hello, it's Sarah from Hardcover Hearts, back with my week of reading wrap up. This is where I talk about the books that I read last week, what I'm currently reading, and potentially could read next week based on my mood and numerous factors. Uh, so I tried to put this up yesterday, actually did the whole video, edited it, it would not take at YouTube, would not take. So here we go. Well, let's just start fresh, you know, yesterday was a different day. It's a bright, sunny day. It's going to be a gorgeous weekend. I have four days off. So yes, fresh, fresh start. So let me, let me kind of share what happened last week because I had a fantastic reading week and I think my mojo is back. And so I want to share some of that joy with you. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing I finished, The Death of Vivek Oji, and this is by Akwiki Amezi. Gorgeous, gorgeous cover. This was one of the Book of the Month Club picks. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that a little later. Uh, great, great, from the moment you open this book, it is, it is, captures you. Uh, you open with the death of Vivek Oji, that he died on the day the market burnt. And his body, his naked body, was left on his doorstep. And his mother finds it. Uh, that is a very, there's a very uh, visceral uh, reaction similar to what I had with Jintu by Jennifer Nasabuka Makumbi. In this story, there's also a very similar type of, of opening. That scene felt very familiar. But this is much more about generational trauma and a curse that carries through generations. And so you see many, many layers and many lives. Whereas this is a tighter focus on a specific family in Nigeria. Uh, this is so much about visibility, about being who you are, about uh, secrets, um, about having one foot in one place and one foot in the other, and very much uh, expertly done, just very well done. Uh, it starts with two brothers who marry two wives and their sons, uh, who, and they're all very close. The wives don't get along as well, but uh, the it really takes takes forward with Vivek and his and his cousin. And that's where we really focus our attention. Uh, it's beautiful. It's very fast, very simply told, but very fast. And there's a there's a lot here. I, I thought it was I thought it was remarkable. Uh, gave it uh, four and a half stars. So I, I recommend uh, you read that. Then I finished The Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakaborty. This is the last of the David Bob trilogy, and I feel like I can't say too much about it because it's a trilogy, and what I say about this one might give spoilers to the journey that people are going to start with volumes one and two. I continued this in audio, which was a fantastic experience, just such a great uh, narration. Uh, the What I find is that this is... I think I've mentioned before that this is set in uh, the Middle East. And so we have um, Middle Eastern lore and jinns and ifrits and all sorts of that type of, of mythology that's kind of pulled in. Uh, and it's and there's just a ton of political intrigue. And what I find in this one specifically is uh, the women are very complex. They're, it, this kind of centers on uh, machinations between different women. Uh, and it it's becomes very focused on them, whereas earlier uh, the women were just kind of in the background. They come forward in, in this one and two very, very interesting, interesting um, machinations and conclusions. I was very happy with the way it ended. I think this was a great series, and I will read anything that she, she does moving forward. Okay, then the next thing that I read was a, a, a book that I wanted to read. Uh, for, I wanted to read some Rumor Godden. Uh, so Rumor Godden is kind of a, a writer kind of in the mid-century, last century. And I've heard of her from Backlisted. I've also heard of her from a book that I recently purchased, Black Narcissus. Uh, and I think that's maybe one of her more famous works. I'll talk more about that later. Uh, but I wanted to try to uh, read something of hers. And I am a part, I get all of these emails about uh, discount uh, digital books, ebooks.
There's one I get that seems to be primarily backlisted books. I think it's called Early Bird uh, Newsletter. And she's always in there for something. And so I thought, okay, well, let me try, let me get one of these. And the book that I chose uh, it, through one of these deals was The River, because it had little elements of maybe the secret garden, if the secret garden was continually set in India. Now, I will say, uh, allow me to, to kind of put a little caveat here. I'm very uncomfortable with colonial uh, stories. I'm attracted to them and repulsed by them <laughs> in equal measure. So I grew up in Mozambique, post-colonial, independent uh, Mozambique, uh, after revolution from, from Portugal. And so I'm very aware of that, and speaking of one foot in, one foot out, of the wreckage done by colonialism, but also the allure and and the romance and the um, the decayed beauty of of colonial rule at a horrible horrible expense, right? And so it's a it's very conflicted, and I'm always looking for a really good post a, a good colonial novel that deals with that duality the that all of this opulence, all of this easy life and beautiful existence comes at the suffering of the people that were colonized and the land that was colonized. And so you're basically robbing from the people that are serving you. It's, uh, so I go into all of these colonial novels with that, with that lens. Uh, so given that, uh, this is a very good book. It's very well written. It's beautiful nature writing. We we focus on a young girl, and she's kind of in that pre-adolescent stage. She is kind of the there's four there's four children and a fifth one on the way. They live in uh, in pretty good, really good standards, uh, but not as as high standards as some of their peers, in, in their British peers. She has an older sister, B, and she has a younger brother and younger sister. And she's at the age where she's she's trapped between them, between the two of these. B is kind of really separated herself. She's starting to uh, do her own things, and, and she's more of a teenager uh, now. And and our, our character is kind of right there in the middle where she's she's interested in type of the things that B's doing, but she's still playing with the, with the younger kids. And she fashions herself to be a poet and wants to be a poet. And so she writes poetry and, and, and the like. This is very much about uh, the seasons of life. It's very much about the passing of time. Uh, it, so nature writing is really beautiful here, as I mentioned. Uh, the characters are really, are really great. And it's almost, I, I could almost see just focusing on this family without all of that that emphasis of the of the colonial life only because from a child's perspective children don't pay attention to anybody in their sphere you know nobody cares about the the teachers or the nan or the the housekeepers or 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 the people around them uh and so you could almost get away with it from that perspective however it is still very much a colonial book, and so there is no uh, sense of autonomy or or character creation of these these other people that are in her sphere, other than her naming them, you know. So that is a ding against the book, but it's also true of the time. So the, I don't know that we could have expected something from in mid mid nineteenth century to be, and I think it was written in nineteen forty one. I think to have that kind of lens. Uh, but I, I did really, I thought it was beautiful. And uh, I, so I gave it a three star because it was beautiful, but it's, but it's complicated, <laughs> problematic as we say. Okay, so, uh, so that's that. Then I finished for my In Real Life book club, A Burning. This is by Mega Majumdar. This just came out also from Book of the Month Club. I read this with my In Real Life book club and we had a, a meeting yesterday, which was great. This is so fast paced. We open with a horrific scene of a bombing on a train. The train pulls into the train station, people are, are getting on and a bomb is thrown in and it just spreads and there's massive atrocities. 
Um, it's a horrible, horrible uh, problem. It's, it's, and they immediately are trying to find uh, who did this. Clearly a terrorist attack. Uh, our, main, our main character, Jivan, is uh, on social media and she writes something, uh, how the cops were there and they, and they didn't help. And so if the cops are there and they're not helping, are the, is, and they're, um, they're representing the state, are the state, are the state terrorists? And she thinks no more of it. She logs off and she goes to sleep. Well, that has dire, dire consequences for her. Uh, we also have two other main characters that we see their perspective. One is a teacher of hers uh, who gets himself involved in politics. And uh, through through a very strange way, just kind of stumbles into it. And then we have a fantastic, probably the best character in the book, Lovely. And Lovely is a transgender hijra. And and our character Jivan was was uh, actually meeting up with with Lovely and teaching her English, teaching her how to read, and and helping her. And she has aspirations and dreams. Uh, Lovely is trying to be better herself and she wants to become an actress. And um, these all come into play uh, in this book. Uh, this is really about the machinations that happen. And, and it's not necessarily that it's fated, but it's much more that, uh, th that people are pawns by forces beyond them. The societal forces, political forces, uh, and and the ways that people get caught up in that or don't based on choices that they make. Uh, it was good. It was, it was very, very well written. I mean, this is a tightly edited book. Uh, the author is an editor at Catapult and you really get the sense of a well edited book. And it reminds you of how much uh, many books are not edited uh, as they used to be. There were some, some areas where we felt that the, that the tightness of the structure, uh, you could see the seams a little bit. And so there wasn't, it, we would have liked more character development of Jivan and not just her story. Uh, but very good read, uh, recommend it. And this would be a fantastic book club read. So that's what I read, really, really, really great reading. Uh, I did have a DNF. And so let me talk really briefly about this. This was Sex and Vanity by Kevin Kwan. So I enjoyed Crazy Rich Asians. I thought it was just a light romp, you know, but I thought the characters were really great. Uh, I was interested in this specifically because I heard it was a retelling of a book that I love and a movie that I love even more, which is A Room with a View. And I had just read it for um, Reading Rush. And so I was like, oh, this will be fun. Let me, let me check it out. And I started to listen to it in audio, got to the famous scene where... Charlotte, uh, the chaperone or older cousin who's following along and Lucy as she's off to this wedding in Capri uh, to watch her friend get married. Uh, they are given a room that has no view and she's kind of throwing out a fit about it. So it was nice to hear uh, something so familiar in a different setting, but ultimately the construct just doesn't work in a modern age. What's so compelling about uh, a Room with a View is all of the restrictions that Lucy is under based on propriety, social norms, uh, what was what was right for a young girl, uh, and all the ways that her future was really limited and how she had to crack out of that uh, to find love and accept love. Uh, and it just, it's not, it, it just can't be the same because we're in a modern age and it's set now. So with that, I decided to DNF it. Um, it's just messing too much with something that I love and, and I, I just think the construct won't work. Uh, but let me know if you think I'm wrong if you have read this and you think that I should continue with it at a later date. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about what I'm currently reading. I'll zip through these because, uh, because a lot of these you've seen before. Continuing with uh, Zadie Smith Intimations, these essays, just reading a little at a time. Continuing with Marcel Proust, uh, this is In Search of Lost Time, Swan's Way, Volume One. I am doing something where we're at the, at the portion, we're about to start the portion where it goes into Swan in Love, 
And so I went and bought the Oxford World Classics Edition because it has all of the end notes and the uh, auxiliary information that really kind of helps me contextualize what's happening. Uh, you know, there's some of that here, and Lydia Davis's translation is phenomenal. But you know, it never hurts to have an, another another source. And then uh, continuing with a writer's diary being extracts from the diary of Virginia Woolf. Uh, so this and the Zadie Smith are, are easier to just kind of dig in and out of because they're essays and or journal entries. So uh, not a story that you need to follow with per se. Then uh, I will be finishing up today uh, the next of the Anita Bruckner series that I'm doing with Leo of Little Book Life, who I'm also reading The Proust with. And this is uh, Miss Alliance by Anita Bruckner. I have to say, people, this might be our first Anita Bruckner that we're not enjoying. Uh, I'll tell you more about this next week, but suffice it to say, it feels stiffer and it feels uh, there's there's a sub subtext to this. It's just not comfortable and I'm not enjoying it, which is shocking. OK, so that's what I'm currently reading. Let me tell you about what I'm interested in. So I have I think I mentioned I have four days off. And I'm just in the reading mood. I just want to read everything. So uh, I was really interested in Books and Vows did a video about uh, the 10 historical Gothic novels that you should that you should uh, read that are new out. And this is my jam. I love these things. So that's where the Black Narcissist comes from by Rumor of God. I also have a few books by Laura Purcell. I read her book, The Corset, and thought it was so good. <laughs> and so this is Silent Companions, a gorgeous, gorgeous soft cover here. And look, when you open it up, uh, even the uh, flap has a gorgeous design. Uh, and I also have, so that's The Silent Companions, and I also have Bone China. That's also gorgeous. Let's see if they have a... Ooh, that flap is pretty lovely too. That's very nice that they did that for a uh, soft cover. Let's see what other ones. Uh, then also Book of the Month Club, Things in Jars by Jess Kidd. Even this name creeps me out. <laughs> this one I may put a little later, but I've heard great things about it. But uh, yeah. Then uh, these were two new ones from the Books and Bow that I hadn't heard of. So I went and bought them because of course, uh, Wake, Wake and Hearst by Michelle Paver. Look at that cover, kind of a silver foil. Uh, and this I had to order from the UK, not available in the US yet. And this is uh, Anita Frank wrote The Lost Ones. Some houses are never at peace. Woo, look at that. Let's see. Yeah, so really, Really excited by these, it's, you know, especially because it's September and kind of get in the spirit of autumn. Even though now that we're in September, California is going to go into our summer. So just know that all, you, you saw all my winter work, winter wear, fall wear earlier this summer. Uh, and then I just received the latest book of the month club, Transcendent Kingdom by Yad Jassi. So I was so excited to read this. Uh, so this could appear in next week's update. What else? Uh, oh, I wanted to, I think Book of the Month Club has been providing some fantastic reads. Uh, and I thought, I, I know a couple people have asked me about it. So I'm going to drop my referral link below if you're interested in joining. Um, I'll get a, a free book and I think there's a discount for the person who joins. Uh, what it is, is you every single month you get a choice of five books that have not yet been released. They're about to be released. Uh, they're all in hard, in hard copy. Now you will get the Book of the Month Club kind of uh, stamp on the top of it. Uh, that's part of the of the of the uh, hard cover. <clears throat> I'm sorry, of the flap. And each of them have, and that's also part of the hard cover as well. I'm not sure if you can see that. Yeah, right there at the bottom. Uh, but they're only $10. Each are only $10. And you, if you decide that you don't like one of those five, you can always just uh, pass and keep your, keep your credits. Uh, and they also give you options uh, underneath kind of add-ons uh, that you can also do for, for $10. Uh, but let me put that link below. And then the last thing I wanted to say is I wanted to welcome Karen from Run Right Reads 
to our Wednesday series that, that a few of us are doing uh, on moving from books into action. And she called it Beyond Books. And she had a really great um, passion, impassioned plea of how we move forward and why it's important to do more than just read books and how we get into activism. So I will put a link to that video below as well and also a, an invitation to anyone who wants to join. Please um, join up and put a video up on Wednesday that talks about actions that you think people can take that they may not have considered or thought of or books that talk about activism that you're that you think are worthy of talking about that's it for me uh thank you so much for watching i please stay safe uh maintain social distance wear masks wash your hands and don't touch your face that's it thanks <laughs>